This video is brought to you by RGB! <laughs> I'm tired. It's like 3 a.m. now. Hey folks, it's the long-awaited return of Grateful 42. You live really close to me now. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Why haven't we done this more often? <laughs> anyway, we have been testing one of his sister's computers. This is my original bulldozer bin. It yeah. started not having any video output at all, but was still like not, it wasn't having any error codes. It just wasn't putting out PCI lanes. You guys might remember this build from a video we did years ago, back when he upgraded from socket 939, I guess? Yeah, it was an Athlon dual core. Yeah, it was a long I time ago. I went from ago. an Athlon dual core to a bulldozer build. It was a really nice jump in technology. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and all this RAM you might remember from a certain event that happened like seven years ago. God, that it's been a while. That RAM got spread everywhere. I got two sticks of it, other people probably got four sticks of it, two sticks of it, wherever it went. But anyway, uh, this computer wasn't posting. So we took it out of the case, <clears throat> and we stuck it in the lid of this banker's box, because we're high tech and ESD free over here. <laughs> and uh, we got this just power supply sitting on the table, plugged into a surge protector. Using a screwdriver to power it on. We are, we are only professional on this channel. Only professional. Only. So here we are testing it again. So the only thing, the only thing I didn't do at home was reseat the CPU. And of course, what fixed it, hopefully, we did just add more RAM. Oh, it's it, posting. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Showing the VBIOS of the video card. Absolutely perfect. So the, it sat unused for a year and a half, and all I needed to do was reseat the CPU. <laughs> It's even complaining that the CPU and memory have been changed, so we're successful. This is our test video card, by the way, my old GT640. That's a nice card. It's a trusty little card. It's got more memory on it than my derpy stopgap video card that had half a gig. When, oh, when, yeah. when EVE Online dropped their support for lower-end video cards, I tried to upgrade, and it didn't work. <laughs> because my Athlon build couldn't support uh, PCIe 2.0. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's when you knew it was time to upgrade. That, that, that was a sad day. <laughs> you saved me. You had an NVIDIA card that was able to work at that time. I forget what card that was. I gave it back to you. I don't know what it was. It was, uh, it was something. You, you had it, and it wasn't being used. God, I can't remember what that was. It might have been a 240 or something. But I, tra I traded you my Radeon card for it, until I, until I upgraded. I remember that now. Yep. So, this board's successfully posting. So hopefully, when we put it back in the case, it will still work. I am so mad. <laughs> All I had to do was reset the CPU, and it was so tedious because I hate pulling that liquid cooler off of it. Oh, we didn't mention that part. This is the. Uh... Yeah, that was an upgrade I had to put onto it after putting after moving this whole build into a different case. It started thermal shutting down. Corsair. Well, of course, because it's bulldozer based, and yeah. bulldozer gets hot, so... And in, in the case it used to be in, it had a fan blowing onto the back of the motherboard where the CPU was mounted. Right. In the case I put it in for my sister, it didn't have that, and it was actually getting to, like, 90 Celsius and then shutting down. That's pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty bad. So... Of course, that's also because it had the stock heat sink on it. Yeah, which, of course, is a hair dryer, so, you know... I think I, I think I remember that when we were putting this system originally together. We put that in, and it was just like... <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, well, I'm happy. This is working now. So this is working. So we're going to get to other projects, which you will see later tonight. Yay. Well, we're back after a long bout of computer stuff. And first update is this guy here. The 80, that bulldozer thing we were working on. The 8120, yeah. This is all back together and looking nice. And it has the most obnoxious blue LED on the planet. Blue LEDs should be banned from planet Earth. 
Please. I forgot. I forgot why we had it unplugged. We re we found out really fast after plugging it back in why it was unplugged. Yeah, I put my hand in front of it and it was just blue. It's just <laughs> pure, unadulterated eye rape blue. <laughs> Pretty much. But then we got to working on um, these machines. So we the real treat. So here's the story behind those. Uh, a friend of ours needed. A friend of ours' parents, I guess. No, they were just getting rid of them, and I happened to show up while they were wanting to get rid of them, and I said, "I'll take them," mm -hmm. and she was like, "Sure, take them," and I said, well, "Do you want me to get anything off the hard drives?" No, that's okay. But as I walked out the door, our friend was like, "Yeah, my mom doesn't know what she's talking about. Get family photos off these computers." So that's ah, yes, <laughs> and. So we took every drive from this computer, plugged it into the uh, PC over there, and we recovered every piece of data off there. There was no bad drives out of any of these, which is good news for, which is good news for Grateful Forty Two because these are going to become something special. They're going to be part of a quad computer land setup that I'm yes tentatively working on. So what we have here are basically penny a mixture of penny and twos and threes which can all run Windows 98 or 95. This one would probably do 95 better, yeah. I'd imagine, just because I don't know what they were thinking. The CPU when it's running at 133, and it's a Pentium 2. No idea. That's weird. Um, there's also the Mac then, on the end, which I get to keep, which is nice. Yes. Thank you. So, yeah, Luke gets a nice, free Power Mac G4 for helping me re-see the CPU. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a big help. <laughs> I was like, Luke, I've done everything I can to this. I need help. I'm gonna just pull the CPU out, put it back in. Hey, look, it works. God damn it. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a freaking genius, I right. swear. So let's go over these machines. What exactly do we have here to work with? So we'll start on the end here. This is a Micron Millennia. Uh, this is Pentium 3 based. I believe this one has the 450 megahertz Pentium 3, which is a pretty low clock speed for a Pentium 3. But for 98, that's fine because th that's basically a high end Pentium 2 at that point. But you have a better architecture, so it'll still be of some benefit. It has, I think, 100, 128 megs of RAM in it, so that can always be upgraded later. I got tons of SD RAM at home too, so. Oh, absolutely. Now we have, um, it has 3Com internet, Ethernet rather, and um, I believe it has Rivo or NVIDIA Rivo 128 onboard video as well. Yamaha OPL3 something or other um, onboard audio. We're going to go through that when we turn all these on and give you guys an overview of the machines. Um, so that's the first machine. You don't see too many microns anymore. It's kind of something. Usually, you just see a bunch of Dells and gateways. So it's kind of nice to see something a little off off the beaten path. Here's another micron. This is a Micron Millennia XKU. We accidentally broke the zip drive. Yeah, the zip drive bezel and the light tube came light out. Light tube. Not exactly a problem because zip drives are everywhere, and you can replace those easily. I've never used a zip drive. None of the none of the early. 90 machines my dad built had zip drives. I, I never knew what they were. Probably because all you needed was floppy, right? Really. Yeah, we just had floppy and CD-ROM. <laughs> and that was fine, really. Zip drive wasn't used very long. So this is a late Windows 95 machine. It has a Pentium 2 233 in it, which is, the f I think, the first series of Pentium 2s to come out. So it's pretty slow. But, and for some reason on this machine, it runs at 133. And... Beats me as to why that is. Maybe somebody screwed with the settings somewhere and it we just needs to be fixed. We can probably lock it up in, in BIOS if we try. Yeah, maybe. I haven't... We'll try. <laughs> My expertise isn't in Pentium 2, Pentium 1 era machines. I've used them. I own them, but I, I'm not really hugely versed in messing around with them. But that's not to say we can't figure it out. We'll try. Mm -hmm. So, the interesting thing about this machine is it has one of those Pioneer slot lane drives in the top. So that's a bit unique for this machine. Has the Zip 100 drive, of course, a floppy drive. How much RAM was in this? Do you remember? I don't remember that one. I want to say 64 megs. Yeah. I think it had 64 megs in it. So clearly it was designed for 
95. But it had 98 on it, so it was obviously upgraded. So this is this machine's kind of the runt of the pack, but it still works. Yeah, all, all the machines show signs of them being gradually updated until they got a new one, then gradually updated, they got a new one, then gradually upgraded, and then got a new one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, on the end here, which I, th I think is the best candidate for a machine, this is the big boy here. We scored really good with the graphics card in this one. Yes, we did. This is a Gateway Pentium 3 era machine. It looks like it's from 98 or 99. I think 99. And it has a DVD-ROM drive. Well, this the, the Micron Millennia also had a DVD-ROM drive, but the fact that this one has one is more special. You get a floppy drive, you get a... Somebody put a CD burner in here, which is nice. So this will read CDRWs, no problem, which is really good if you're a vintage computer enthusiast and you like using those. It has no zip drive, oddly enough. Go figure. Not that anyone ever <laughs> ever used that anyway. I like worm drive better. Yeah, worm drives. <laughs> <laughs> this has a Pentium 3 700 in it, which is the good one. It has a... 448 megs of RAM in it, so it was upgraded over time, obviously. It has a Riva TNT2 32 meg graphics card in it, which I think is OEM with the machine. Earlier versions of these came with Voodoo's, but the TNT is much better. Much better. So this this will see some good use as a 98 machine, I think. Um, I think I forgot to mention the drive sizes. I believe this machine had the 8 gig drive. This machine has a 3 gig drive, and that has the 40 gig drive, so this is the big boy. It's good. The Mac, unfortunately, has no drive and no mounting hardware for the drive in it, so i got to work on that. <laughs> Someone pulled it out. Yeah, well, good on them for actually pulling their data off of it. But the RAM in this was set up pretty good. Yes, it is. 512, this is 640 megs of RAM in that. So you can see the gradual upgrades that happened over time. <laughs> from nice. this, to this, to this, to that. And these all came from one family, one family who's a, both a friend of ours. Yes. So, like, single user. So they're one owner? Single owner, multiple user. That doesn't stop the machines from being a little dirty, though. Yeah, no, they, they sat in a basement for probably a decade. Yeah, so they're going to need some TLC, especially been, the Mac. That yeah, was the disgusting. Yeah, the Mac is so dusty. Yeah, but this, we got... We got a free game! Free game! <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy of... Uh, we got, there we go. <laughs> IBM! So we got an IBM CD and what computer was this in? I think it was in this one. It was that one. This one or that one. No, it was in the bubble. Yeah. yeah. We were calling this one the bubble. The Micron bubble. So we got an IBM CD and a Micron. How about that? <laughs> IBM, an IBM Crayola paint and play pony game. <laughs> <laughs> what a score. Although in this computer, I got the original 10.1 uh, installer disc with it. Oh, and you, it got, you got the original uh, OS X, yeah. And it didn't really work that well. It made the monitor like try to go into weird video modes and... I, that was bizarre. I suspect that might have been the sheer amount of dust covering every connector we, that, uh, that exists in that thing. So this is a funny story. This is, a, this is similar to the, uh, the AMD machine there, and it was, it was just like a question of reseeding and Everything dusting. and dusting, yeah. Uh, and I looked at the RAM slot, and it was just covered in grime. It was, was disgusting. There was one unpopulated RAM slot that was just filled with dust. Yep, it was really disgusting. So we dusted that out in front of the air filter, and uh, I put the RAM back in. It booted fine. It bonged properly and everything, even without the battery in. So this machine, I think, has some potential, and you might be seeing it in the future. But now we're going to give you a little bit of tour of these machines, since I think, since these are actually running, you'll find it a little more exciting. So off to it. So we're going to start with this machine. This is the Micron that has the Pentium 2 in it. And uh, here's an overview of the back of the machine. As you can see, it's a little dusty still. Uh, you get PS2, USB, which is nice, USB 1.1, two serial, a parallel, built-in audio, and a game port, which is important for certain games. There's the video card slot, and below you have an ISA modem. So let's take a look inside. Let me think this through. 
there we go. A little difficult to get off. So here's the inside of the machine here. This modem is so old. Look how big that speaker is. It's insane. This is the Riva 128 card. The hard drive is mounted from the front, if you could believe it. That was a pretty annoying one to take yeah, out. Yeah, we had to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks like it has a Tiger power power supply. Which means that you can defend yourself with Tiger Shulman's karate or something like that. Uh, there's your Pentium 2. It it's a 233 processor, but it's not quite running at that. There's the RAM, which has very big chips on it. And an interesting story with this machine. It had a BIOS password on it. Oh, yeah. So we had to take the jump a jumper down here, move it to the configure button, and clear the password out. So luckily they made it really easy and completely insecure and useless on these old motherboards. So this computer was saved from a life of doom thanks to that jumper. They labeled it on the board, so we had some, at least some idea of what it was doing. So, I the one thing I really like about this case, though this this bar, I would yes. love modern PCs to bring this adjustable support bar back, because like the modern era, we have these super freaking heavy graphics cards. We do, and I don't know. I just I would like to see these start coming back. A lot of these old cases just had crazy structural integrity. It was built like a freaking tank. Yeah. So this machine could be used as a DOS machine if need be because it has it two does, ISA slots. It does slots. have two ISA slots. I love it. Which is very nice. This is a good board for that sort of thing. So if a 98 machine doesn't work out... My dad can play colonization. Yes, he can. <laughs> so that's the overview of this machine. Let's turn it on and see what it does. All right, so we have this PC set up here. We got a trusty Packard Bell keyboard. Great for 42's HP PS2 optical mouse. It's my pride and joy. It's very nice. So we have the Samsung monitor here, and we're gonna you hit the button. Boop. We should probably fix the buttons because right now the sleep button is set to power. You know what? It works. <laughs> <laughs> You know, plugging in the VGA cable is a good idea. You did it again. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> dumb. There we go. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Pause the screen to read all that. Of course, it's out. Well, actually, we can read it now. Let me uh, adjust the monitor. So here's what you have in this machine. Check this. Seriously? It's back. How? I cleared it. How? I save. I thought we did. <laughs> I did. No. We, didn't save. <laughs> no, we gotta do it again. Ah oh, man. Okay. Since this thing got its password back again, we decided to do the whole jumper thing again. So let's give it a shot. Can I get into the setup without it dying this time? I need 233. Now it's saying 233 again. I like it. That's interesting. The system's a bit quirky. I think it needs a CMOS battery. <laughs> Please, sir, could I have some CMOS? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it needs a CMOS battery anyway, just because the time is bad. Okay, we can get in here and it reports the processors at the right speed. Cool. That was weird. Alright, I'm, I'm going to guess that the default settings, there's there's a password. And I don't know who in their right mind would make that a default BIOS setting, but <laughs> <laughs> that's just mean. Still says 233, so looks like the, the, I think the main, I think the way to solve this problem is to put a new battery in it. Yeah. Now it can continue. Windows 98. Listen to that drive, folks. <laughs> that is the sound of an old Seagate. It's a 3 gig Seagate drive. Still works perfectly. 
They don't make them like they used to. My first hard drive was a one gig Seagate. God. I put StarCraft on it and it was full. <laughs> Look at that pointer. It's a jellyfish. <laughs> well, it's a jellyfish. Who configured this? Somebody who really liked the 98 theme. Uh, and a wasp. <laughs> Why? <laughs> who did this? <laughs> Only a jellyfish can set up your monitor. <laughs> like, I'm surprised this isn't a Spongebob theme or something. <laughs> oh, who lives in a degraded 98 machine? <laughs> Spongebob Squarepants. Who died in oil spill because of BP? Spongebob Squarepants. That's terrible. <laughs> I'm just gonna sting the taxes. Sting. Take that off. Boo! Doing taxes. You're boring. <laughs> so it looks like this is your run of the mill Windows 98 machine. And apparently I don't have a printer or a scanner or a copier. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I don't want to print anything. It's time to stop. The recycling bin is a puffer fish. I wonder if you put something in it if the puffer fish gets bigger. That'd be terrible. But you. Yep. It does! Oh god! <laughs> That's awesome. That's actually adorable. My computer's a little frog. So this is what it reports. It reports 64 megs of RAM at Pentium 2. <laughs> and it is Windows 98 second edition. Alright, so what do we have in here? We have... This is a Diamond Viper V330 NVIDIA Riva TNT or Riva 128 rather, which I think it predates the uh, the TNT2. So this is probably a very early NVIDIA card. Has a US robotics modem in it. How about that, eh? <laughs> it thinks that the Seagate drive is just a generic IDE disk. <laughs> what do we got for network adapters? Just dial up. That's all you get, peasant. Uh, okay, here's the, what the onboard audio is. It's a Yamaha OPL3-SAX WM, the WDM driver. That's pretty generic. I guess it just came with 98. But OPL3 makes me think that this might be pretty good for DOS stuff. But you really don't know until you try. Good news is they're ISA slots, so the point's almost moot, because you can just put a Sound Blaster 16 in it. Lots of Intel chipset stuff is in here. And lots more Intel stuff there. So, pretty run of the mill Windows 98 machine. And what programs does it have? It has Micrographics for Kids, Dreamweaver. It's got Dreamweaver back before it was Adobe owned, I think. Oh. It has the real player or real games. Great Clips Racing. Hooray. Uh. It's got Shockwave. Well, it used to. <laughs> now it's gone. Netscape Communicator. <laughs> That was uh, that was a success, right? Yeah, greeting card maker thing. So pretty bare bones Windows install. I'm not going to show you the documents because that's just rude. That's so rude. <laughs> so I'm going to empty the recycle bin just because I think this puffer fish thing is very amusing. You just deleted QuickTime Player. And look, there's much less bloat in the fish. Oh, it's small now. <laughs> So that is an overview of the Micron Pentium 2 base machine. So this is the runt of the pack, and as you can see, it's still pretty good. Well, now that we have the processor running at the right speed. Yeah, now that's at 233. First, yeah, I think when we first turned it on, it was like forced at that 133. Yeah, I, I think all this really needs is a CMOS battery, and it'll just keep the settings the way yeah. it should be. Luckily, it's easy to fix it. Slap more RAM in it when I get home, too. Absolutely. So this machine, despite the way it looks, and the fact that it's missing a bezel for the zip drive, it runs perfectly. So, good. Okay, the next machine we're going to take a look at is the Micron Millennia. This is, I would say, the middle machine of the pack. It has a 450 megahertz Pentium 3, so it's plenty capable. 
but we'd like to show you around inside a little bit. Let's take a look inside of this thing. The way this comes off is interesting. There's a oh, little, little blue bar. There's a blue bar you push down. Then you can. Pull it then out. you just pull the side panel straight off. It's actually a pretty convenient way to get the side panel off. And here is your machine on the inside. It looks fairly generic, I would say. Uh, there's your Pentium 3. Uh, dusty fan baffle. <laughs> All the capacitors in the back look fine. It does not have an AGP slot, but it does have this little header thing. Which is odd to me. I don't know what that is. Maybe one of you out there knows exactly what knows what that is, but I've never seen that before. That's where an AGP slot would normally be. Otherwise, it has a network card in it, Ethernet card, another oh. PCI slot, and an ISA slot. So you can you still have the option to upgrade your sound, which is very nice. It has a handy connector for the front panel, which reminds me a lot of the MSI board and the, the AMD machine we were working on earlier. It's kind of it's kind of nice to see that. They weren't the first people to have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> this machine has the 8 gigabyte Fujitsu hard drive in it. So just like the... Uh, it's a very aesthetically pleasing drive. Yes, like it, it is. <laughs> so you can see even just by looking at hard drive size how incremental these machines really are. It has another Tiger Power power supply. Uh, Micron seem to really like these. And uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot to see in here other than that. So... Well, here's some of the here's the RAM. That's there's one stick in there. So I want to say that is 128 or 256. I can't quite remember. We'll find out when we turn it on. So let's do so. On. Never this one takes a while. No, it didn't. The power light didn't come on. It did. Why you know? There it goes. There we go. And there we have another Micron PC. Press delete to enter setup. This has a much more traditional award BIOS on it, as you can see, which is more akin to the one that I have on my 98 custom build, actually. Looks like it needs a drive because it just doesn't see any drives in there, so let's do the IDE auto detection. Alright, that's pretty much all we have to do in here. There's not a whole lot to look at in this BIOS. It's a pretty typical late 90s BIOS where you can control most of everything you need. Uh, power management is a little bit more up to date. You can control the plug and play stuff, so you can have compatibility with stuff like NT4, I guess, or 95. So, plug and play OS. I'd, I haven't had to mess with that a whole lot, actually. So a lot of 8 meg video cards in these uh, lower tier machines. So we definitely lucked out with the with the upper tier one. Can't complain. Nope. <laughs> Windows 98, of course. <laughs> Any day now, computer. I got the magic touch. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem to be doing much. Did it die? I think it's just being slow. Oh, I see a prompt now. There All we right, go. There we go. 
They got Michael Jackson. Hey. Or at least some tap dancer. Hello, my baby. Hello. Oh. Yeah. Yes, Netware. <laughs> doobie 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 doobie. All right. Now, now we need to become <laughs> now internet we, hackers. We must become the best <laughs> hackers on the planet. Oh no, we're stuck. We're done. <laughs> I guess all we got to do is hack the password. Well, you know, this, this this is just some of the most difficult task in the world, you know. The people at Microsoft were apparently giving me a UK martini. Ooh. And uh, they they just were endless with their um, you know, foresight of security. And they put in this button you can press to bypass all of it called cancel. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> to text my much newer monitor. This monitor's from like 2007 compared to the computers from like 1999 or something. Recycling bin on this one is a <laughs> it's a Venus fly trap. <laughs> uh, what is with these icons? I don't know. <laughs> the my computer is an orchid. Well, let's put some garbage in there and find out uh, what happens. I think this is the computer that has like no RAM in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty slow. God. It took. <laughs> It just like moved it a little bit. <laughs> oh god! Oh, it hadn't even loaded all the stuff in the uh, tray yet. There we go. Uh oh uh uh. <laughs> that speed though. Oh, I didn't oh, it doesn't do anything. Well, that's well, boring. Again, I'll give it 30 seconds or a minute. <laughs> yeah. But this is what somebody's idea of a really cool font was in the late 90s. Network neighborhood is some bongos. Bongos. <laughs> and my computer is just like messy looking flowers. Orchid. Yeah. Netscape AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah. So... Let's see if we can get into the device manager before next week. Micron? This even has the Micron badge right there. That's the original install. Nice. Okay, so... Riva 128, that's onboard video rather than a card this time. That's NVIDIA there. Looks like we have 3Com Ethernet, which is very nice. That's some of the best Ethernet you can get. Here's where it gets interesting. Okay, that's on board. This is the onboard video. It's an ESS chip of some sort. Uh, it's, uh, it's, the maestro, it's the Maestro, it looks like. Uh, it's got a game port. It's got wavetable, and it has FM synthesis. And, and they're just lazy enough to call it DOS games. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, if it's Sound Blaster compatible, I'll more power to them. So, another pretty good Windows 98 machine, I think. This should do pretty well. Not much to see here. I mean, Windows 98's not that exciting. It's more what you can do with it that's exciting. So, we'll shut this off, and we'll take a look at the big boy. The big boy. Why? Why? You gotta twiddle knobs, man. <laughs> Ooh! Alright, here's the inside of the big boy. This is the gateway. This is the 700 megahertz Pentium 3. Now, this, I think, is the best choice for the ultimate Windows 98 machine. Because it has a nice... It's got a nice system here. It uh, you, the, the power supply is the CPU fan, first of all. So it it that's weird, but I like it. Innovative. It, it has an Aztec power supply, 200 watt, which is nice. Um, 
Now, obviously what makes this machine so good is its specs. It has a lot of RAM in it already, more than enough for 98. Uh, it has the 700 megahertz Pentium 3, 100 megahertz bus on that chip. I forgot if I mentioned that or not. Um, it has a 40 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive in it, which is very good for 98. Uh, that's a similar size that I use, actually. And the nice part is this has a drive caddy that can take up to three drives. So this can be used almost as a repository for just old software. And it has the best hardware out of the bunch as far as graphics power goes. It has a Riva TNT2 32 meg card, which should be able to run a lot of the 3D stuff from the late 90s and early 2000s just fine. Half-Life is will run on that card, for example. Um, it has a pretty generic creative card in it, I believe. I think that's what that is. We'll find that out once we turn it on. And, and of course, on the bottom, we have a networking card. So Ethernet. Ethernet. It has everything. So this, I think, is the most well-equipped machine and probably the best of the best of the bunch. Like, out of the box. It's just, it's just fine. So let's power this up and take a good look at it. one of these old noisy western digitals. They're noisy but they're reliable. There's your TNT2 VBIOS showing up. Gateway! This computer, as I recall, was working just fine when I we first tried it. I want to change the splash screen to just say CalCube. <laughs> I want to change the screen to take a look at this. <laughs> One of you out there will get that joke. <laughs> Gee, it takes a long time to prepare to run a setup. It's just a BIOS. Good God. There it goes. Snacks. Snacks. There's your idea of what's in the computer. You get 448 megs of RAM. 700 meg Pentium 3. So, this is an absolute treat of a computer. This is also a much more modern BIOS than the uh, Pentium 2 based rig. So, here's the ridiculous RAM setup this thing has. Oh god! Why is it in French? Who keeps changing <laughs> that? I hit the space bar. There we go. <laughs> okay, so, update. Space bar changes the language very fast. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's a feature I didn't know about. <laughs> Anyway, this is the ridiculous RAM setup we have in here. A 128 meg stick, a 64 meg stick, and a 256 meg stick. This is a hodgepodge of RAM, but it adds up to a pretty good amount of it, so. Not bad, not bad at all. And it's 1990, guys. Get out your, get out your uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot cassettes. <laughs> all right. Um, there's not much else to see in this BIOS. It has the same password stuff in it, which is disgusting and should never be used. So, let's boot this thing up and show you what she can do. Although I think this has a desktop background of, a, of the original owner, so we might have to change that. Oh crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah you're right. Stop the video! <laughs> I'll at least let you watch it boot up first and then I'll change the background to something silly. I just put my face over the, over the body. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the sensor. <laughs> what if we bothered to, like, take that off this machine, bring it over to my main rig, and edit the photo to put your face in it? What if we were that dedicated? If only. Almost sounded like I had a two-tone beep there. That was weird. This one has Windows XP on it, if you could believe it. With oh, yeah. 48 megs of RAM. And that's why that's probably why they stuck the 256 meg stick in there in the first place. And when we ran this earlier, it doesn't run too too badly for Windows XP, but it it's a little sluggish on boot. So that's kind of how XP was anyway back then, to a certain extent. I remember um, 
laptops I had acted like that. There was one that I, I think you might remember me bringing to school. It would take like 10 minutes to finish booting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that Inspiron 8200, that was, that was some times. Now, here's another just brilliant hack job. This is, this is security at its finest. I'm going to press enter. Bam. I reset the time to its default values. <laughs> And, or made it invalid, but yeah. This is our high-tech solution to privacy. <laughs> but we can keep him putting his hand in the fish's mouth. <laughs> so this is a Windows XP machine, if you can believe it. How about that? It even has an old version of Google Earth on it that has a 2005 copyright date on it. I'm not going to open that because it took a while. It took a while? Yeah. It but has Adobe... When it loaded, the 3D worked really good. It kind of did, actually. Remember trying to use Google Earth. AOL spyware protection? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> this computer was online, apparently. <laughs> Once. Once. It was online like long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Quicken on here. It's got Family Origins. I guess it's a family tree program. Yeah. Photo programs. Uh, this computer had the most um, data on it that we had to back up of any of them. So. That this one was the big boy in many ways. So there you go. It's running the processor at 696, but it's a 700. We all know that. <laughs> 448 megs of RAM. Windows XP Service Pack 2. Let's take a look at what we have in here. This has the Riva TNT 2 which is excellent card for what Great 42 is going to use these machines for. Intel-based Ethernet, which is good stuff. Uh, there's your Pentium registered... There's your Intel registered Pentium registered 3 processor. As far as sound goes, it has a pretty generic audio PCI creative card. Um, I don't know how good these drivers are in 98 or DOS or what have you, but... You can just replace that card and you're good to go. I There are many models that work with DOS still. In 98. A lot of Intel stuff, as it would be for a Pentium 3. And... Looks like you got Intel USB, so... Lots of Intel machines here to look at, so... Not too, too exciting, but... It shows the candidates we have for 98 machines and for a LAN rig. And I think all of these can handle the games that Grateful 42 is going to throw at them. Assuming the 8 megs of video RAM. Live for the swarm. <laughs> Assuming the 8 megs of video RAM is enough. So <laughs> we shall see. So these are the three machines. The Mac, uh, there's no drive in that, so there's not really much to show yet. It does boot from the CDs. I tested that. So we'll get to that eventually on this channel. Uh, I just need to get the mounting hardware and I might probably, have a... It probably needs a caddy. Yeah, I need to get a drive for that too. I don't know if I have any extras. I think I do. I'll, I'll have to look in my collection. I'm pretty sure I have at least one. So that'll be a separate video, but I figured I'd show you these. We might do a follow-up follow up on these machines in action as land machines eventually once Great Before 42 gets around to doing that. I'm lazy. Yeah, so <laughs> look how long it took us to make another video. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, that's your machine. So let's power this guy down. Don't forget, kids, always fist your fish. <laughs> oh, yeah, the printer. Yep. So Great 42 left me with this really big printer that we're going to take a look at. That's the dust rag. It's dirty. It's very dirty. So this printer is pretty cool. We'll take a look at that in a future video, I think. Assuming it's, you know, interesting enough to make a video of. I haven't actually overviewed it yet. It's a nice printer. It is. It's got networking in it. <laughs> These are the three machines that'll be going with Graver 42, along with uh, his sister's build. So. Yep, this was a pretty good overview. Uh, hopefully we'll have a follow-up to these three. I'm looking forward to that whenever that happens. Who knows when that'll happen. <laughs> so, these machines will be going back. It's pretty late at night, so 
we should probably stop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good one, everybody. Good night. Ciao.